years. So that's great. And Just so we, we can capture you in slow fishing. motion in case you say something really scintillating, we can capture you from all the angles. Did he really or, say that? Wait again, let's see that from camera thing. number three. I can't believe he really said that. Oh my <laughs> God, what's, what, what was they thinking? You were so canceled. Everybody's canceled now. So I thought we could do a crock pot unboxing really quick. Um, so, so here's, a, I have some basic questions uh, with regard to the um, crock pot and the, and the halaka. Does a crock pot require toiveling? Does any, do yes. these utensils, right? So of it's course. not considered, so the crock pot is not to be considered a Jewish company. It needs the whole thing. So, okay, so how does this work? What do I do? Does this, does it, does the stoneware need to be toiveled? Yes, unless it's yeah. glazed. Everything presumably, what about the plastic? No. You might just have to take it to the river. That's okay. So um, let's talk about the crock pot. Crock pots are good. Do we need to? Um, do we want to do the unboxing, or are we are we happy enough with with? with the you do whatever thing? you want. We got thirty minutes. I'm I'm cool. I think. Um, why don't you? Why don't Why don't we talk about what's what's going on in the news and the world and stuff? What, what, what What's your What's your take on stuff? Is that, yeah, that's, how's, I know how's nothing the, about the world. I know nothing about the world. It's all what I hear from my clients. So what it's not just. Are. I can't even give a, a, a clear judgment based on the facts. It's off of somebody else's judgment off of what they thought are facts. Wow. So it's really, wow. really like third, fourth hand. Yeah, I kind of in a, I, so the only, the only, my major news source right now is the Northwest London Kahila. And they've basically sent through a bunch of coronavirus stuff. Um, and some, a big lot, there was a big long halakha share about vaccine, which I watched about half of and I can't. I'm not sure if they're pro or anti because it was so complex. Um, so it was a whole long conversation about whether or not you should. And I was like, so he's saying we should take it. And then, and then he goes, but then if you think, if you speak to the Russian, and I was like, oh. Uh. So it was an hour's um, worth of uh, confusion. I don't even know. I have to go back and watch it again because I'm not sure what the conclusion was because it's one of those like, ah, but then Sounds like a classic halacha. Uh, Hazal um, says. Yeah. I know. It's, it's just like, can you just please cut to the decision? I just want to know. Pause for me, Rabbi. Pause for me. So that was fun. Um, so apparently uh, Israel and Britain, uh, so Israel has actually cut off um, travel completely from the UK. So the UK is now not, no one from the UK can travel to Israel because of the new coronavirus in the UK, which is pretty scary. Um, so that's a bit worrying. Um, I don't know, probably, hopefully they're just being cautious, but that's a bit, wor bit worrying because, yeah, I'm, all my friends are in the UK. Not that you're flying in anytime soon. No, no. Well, I was actually thinking about going back for the purposes of uh, tax stuff because I need to technically be resident in two places, but I, I don't think it's going to happen. I'm going to have to somehow do it over Zoom. Do everything Sounds shady. Zoom. Not shady. Sounds like a Jewish scam. scam. <laughs> you think everything's a Jewish scam. You Welcome to the club. Scam. Yes, you Jewish are scamming. Scam. Good. <laughs> so in, um, yeah, check it out. I got, so I got my NetSpark filter. Look at this. Look at this. I'm, fil I'm on Zoom, right? Speaking of, it's definitely not a scam because I've got a phone filter. See, look. So we've got a, I've got my, you can't see that on the, on the camera, but it's. No, it's what am I looking for? So I've, I've managed to get zoom working with the NetSpark filter on my phone so i can now use zoom and zoom works very happily the, the, it seems why don't you tell the listeners all the listeners out there what a NetSpark filter is so a NetSpark filter is a, a from filter which allows you to mm. confidently use your phone without the possibility of uh unwanted uh, goyish influences uh invading your phone and privacy and home and uh interrupting the showing device so basically and now you figured out how to use zoom with it too yeah so i can do no because you it was normally it's really difficult to use it, it doesn't let you use facebook messenger so i just realized that it blocks facebook messenger as well so because you might so, be texting the wrong people and yeah, been getting be, the wrong influence exactly i could be texting i don't know all kinds of all kinds of i might be texting you know me humanist you yeah yeah <laughs> all kinds of all kinds of shady people so that so that's bad so you don't you should not allowed to do that so that's a sewer uh, everything's a sewer everything on the phone is a sewer basically that's that's the that's the guy uh -huh. but no apart from zoom apparently zoom is okay so um so because everybody uses zoom it's not because zoom is okay it's because the amount of admin involved with 
having everybody individually unblock Plume would overwhelm the tech support people because they'd have to undiv- they'd have to sign off. They just have to press OK about a million times for uh-huh. every single Jewish person in the world who's using Zoom. So because it's pretty much mandatory now to have Zoom if you're Jewish. I think I, I, I've yet to see anyone Jewish who doesn't have Zoom. All right. A lot of the schools uh, require the school? it, especially for the yeah. you know the yeah. classes. Yeah. So like all the rabbis have come out going, yeah, Zoom is fine. You can have Zoom. Zoom is better than Facebook. They're like, if you're going to have to choose, but don't have Facebook, but you can have Zoom because Zoom is more like being in a room with a person and that's that's okay. And actually I agree with that because Facebook is just poison. But anyway, um, oh yeah, I had so much trouble with faith. I was doing this um, Hanukkah thing. We were doing like a Hanukkah live stream for my friend who, who um, passed away. And we, we, were, uh, we were trying to like live stream, like just music and like just, you know, try to play some records and stuff over over uh, over Facebook feed and just completely blocked everything. The copyright robots from Facebook just go, this video contains eight seconds of content owned by Universal Media Group or whatever it is. Um... And it, it either deletes the video, prevents people from seeing it or shadow bans the video so you can't see, so it doesn't let other people see it but doesn't tell you. So you just think the video is fine but actually it's either got the sound switched off or it's just completely hidden. So Facebook, just don't bother. It's just not worth the stress. That means that you won't be able to do it on YouTube either. They're also very uh, careful about uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube. No, no. Actually, YouTube are better because YouTube have got content agreements with people. So YouTube have already paid their blanket license. Basically, Facebook don't want to pay people. So they just go, yeah, block it, yeah, block it. But YouTube actually do give some tiny revenue share to the record companies, I believe. All right. So you can do stuff like play YouTube on a Twitch stream. And apparently that's OK. I'm not sure. It's really complicated and it changes every few weeks. So, your tech support, you got to figure this out. This is your job. You know, I know it's so difficult. You know, I'm blocking, I'm blocking uh, Facebook Messenger on Zoom. It's just been, it's just been so much work. Um, actually, I'm not tech support. I'm engineering. I invent things, and other people have to do the support. I, I'm, I'm in the uh, same thing. Same thing. Yeah, avant garde. It's not the same thing. It's like, right? It's like the difference between being in the Talmud and being in the commentary. <laughs> <laughs> So that's that's uh, that's the thing. So that's been fun, and I've I've rearranged my my studio. As you can see, I've got my bookshelf on my Gamora there, so that looks very exciting. Um, because people mm-hmm. were saying that it, my room doesn't my studies doesn't look Jewish enough, which is it's fair. Uh-huh. So now it looks Jewish. So do you do you crack this? Do you crack the Talmud? Yeah, yeah it's easy. I've read it all. Been got through all thirty-seven volumes. of pretty much yeah, it's the best. Mm-hmm. That's just those arguments. So I was thinking of reading questions from the from the listeners. Yeah, I idea. had so many questions over the past week. I, I know there's been so much email. It's just been I haven't even had time to read it. You want to you want to read those out? Uh, uh, I can't read all of them, but there was, there was a major oh, reoccurring nice. theme. I'll tell you what. Yeah. I'll read specifically from somebody from France, from Francois Dubois, oh, yeah. from Paris, uh, and this uh, this this really. Um, it, uh, this is a common common thread, but I'm just going to read his. He wants to know, alias, what is with the beard? And if it is so important, why does Achille not have the beard? Francois. Huh. Good point. Well, um, I mean, what's with the beard? Well, it says in Devarim. <laughs> oh, it's a Daraisa. It's in the Bible. Yeah. It says, okay. you're not supposed to cut the corners of your face. So I don't cut the corners the of my face. Now, maybe I take it, uh, now, maybe I've taken an overly, um, what's the Zealous. Word? Zealous. Not zealous. Because a zealous, now, the ze- that's, a, that's a, we don't use that word. Zealous means that you're willing to hurt other Jews. No, no, no. No, it no, does. No. The zealots, the zealots were willing to, they, they were a political, basically terrorist organization who wanted to overthrow the Romans. And they were willing to actually uh, kill other Jews who were not supporting them. So that's right. Kind that's of, the political group zealots, right? But in yeah. the Muster books, you know. So the, the word, the, the word the, is not zealous. It's a different word. What's the word? Meticulous ad- adherence to the um, text or like severe. So there's a whole thing with like, Hasidic decision making is different to um, to yeshivish decision making because uh, so Hasidic poskim are supposed to take the most extreme view and sort of lean towards that. So you have to well, consider the most extreme view, and the most extreme view is you shouldn't cut your hair at all, ever. <laughs> so right. I'm I'm sort of I'm not, I'm not like full on Hasidic anyway, but just I sort of am currently in 
following that stream of thought. But yeah, so I mean, I do trim my beard sometimes. Um, <gasps> You know, and uh, when it's appropriate, depending on the calendar, you have to check the calendar to see if you're allowed. In, during your weaker times. So, yeah, you can't shave during certain periods of, you can't shave like during the, the three weeks or whatever, the, those all different times you can and can't, can't cut your hair. Okay, That's Francois, fine. I hope you are satisfied. With that yeah, answer. so it's uh, also, um, yeah, and, and you should definitely go to uh, the Beard Struggle and, and input the uh, coupon code, which is in the Okay, I have another question from Allison. That's just only one name from Arkansas. She wants to know how come she sees some Hasidim with their heads are shaved. And secondly, she wants to know if we will shave our heads for one of the podcasts. So is is this, uh, who, who is this Allison? <laughs> I don't know if she's really making a joke. I don't she, know if she this a real is... person. Is she one of these like <laughs> chat robots who tries to get you to? Let's assume. Yourself? Let's assume that it's a real. Let's let's let, well. Let's answer both ways. A lot let's of weird, I real. get a lot of weird emails from women called Allison. I'm just telling you. <laughs> let's assume that she's real, or let's make another answer. So for, are we let's talking about she's a robot? Are we talking about shaving the back of the head, or just no? The whole... They shave everything. Everything but their pace. Everything so but they... their pace. Yeah, like the Sotmers do, right? Completely bald over here, and then they just let their pays grow. Well, it's but just easier to. I mean, it's just it's what? To, it's just easier to do it that way because everything just sort of fits. Because you got like the hang on, like so you get like the um. You, you got oh, your, you do do it. Yeah, yeah. You got like your your um. If you're if you're if you got in the morning, right? You got your you got your to fill in here, and you got your right. Your so that's here. one answer. That's then, one answer because when you put on your tefillin, there shouldn't be a chatzitza. Yeah, but actually, the thing is, it makes your pears look longer if you shave the back of the head. That's the second it reason. Emphasizes they the want to right. They want to show the pears. Yeah, exactly. So when you're a kid, you like some people. I the satmaras don't cut them. Well, no, they do actually. The the whole thing about like, so some Hasidim don't cut them at all, and they grow really really long, and they have to then curl them because otherwise they'll be like right. dragging on the floor. But um, satmar, according to the opinion of the Satmar Rebbe, you are supposed to burn them before they get to, you either cut them or burn them off when they get to about here. So right. generally Satmar will not have incredible, you sometimes do see people with like dreadlock payas, which are impressive. But um, my understanding is the Satmar Rebbe didn't, didn't, but who knows what, uh, I'm sure he would be overridden now by the newer guys. So I'm sure that um, the actual living Satmar Grand Rebbe's may have different opinions on that. But um I don't know. I'm not an expert on Satmar. I, I, I have some Satmar friends. But I'm not, you know. So you already shaved your head. So now Allison wants to know if I guess if I'm going to shave my head for the next podcast. I mean, it's, I don't think you have to. Um, I think it's a minhag. But uh, I mean, you know, it would look cool. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. It's, it's like, I don't think you do. The only thing, the only thing really is, uh, as far as I think is the rest, is, is the head, the the hairline is you know put it to fill in um, above the hairline. Where's it below the hairline? No, it's above the hairline. So, um, but apart from that, I don't think you have to shave the head. I think the payas is is just a. It's a good question. I'm pretty sure it's like a min hike. I don't think you, I don't think it's like. Something. I mean, I mean the, for what? So for for satmar or for whatever whichever it's not, it depends that's which what they do. Yeah, but it depends. Do. Right. Depends which no, but for um. In in so for we talk so we talking about men or women because it's different for women. So for men women, talking about okay, so for men because some summer women do shave their heads after they get married as well, which is a thing. That's a different reason. That's as a specifically a satmar thing. That's a that's a extra. Um, what's the word? It's a meticulousness of uh, that's a uh, the satmar rebbe basically was like just shave the head because then it doesn't become an issue at all. And that's you know, the sound where you take that from the picture, which is a the most extreme thing. Not extreme, but the most severe option. So they will go, if there's a halakha, they'll sort of look at it and go, okay, well, this is the lenient option and this is the most severe option. And then they vote. I think that's how it works. There's kind of usually, it's not just, if you've got multiple opinions, you usually are supposed to go with the most severe opinion. Anyway, but that, I'm not sure if that's always the case, but in some cases, that's, that's it's certainly well, definitely. Well, Allison, I hope you're satisfied with that answer. Yeah. Do you have any uh, reader uh, questions you'd like to read out? Oh, we did have. What was the one we had from? Yeah, that was it. Little little Timmy, who's twelve, mm -hmm. says, 
Dear Yoeli, I'm about to make my bar mitzvah. Where do you stand on the makhloikas between, the, um, between Rashi and Rabbeinu Tam with regard to wearing two sets of tefillin? <laughs> well, well, I'm not a rabbi. Or but, a halakhic authority. Or halakhic authority. And this is all in jest. But um, I only put on Rashi. So I never got around to Rabbeinu Tam's. Mm. Oh, you're still young. I still have time? Yeah, you've got all the time. You don't have to. Some people don't do it until they're like 40 or at all even. I mean, there's a whole conversation about whether it's just completely. So basically, Lubavitch, the Lubavitch Rebbe basically said that it was commandment, or no, it was a law because there was a ruling. Oh, and I forget. what There was some some kind of ruling that wasn't publicized about it being a law. So Chabad it's definitely encouraged to do it in Chabad, but I don't think it's actually required. So it's sort of an extra thing that you can do, but there's a, a there is, there are interviews with, with people who, who knew the Rebbe and said that, that basically uh, he was like, yeah, do it from your bar mitzvah if, if you want to. Um, but I think it's kind of optional, but I think it's become kind of more common now. I've seen, I see quite a few Chabad um, people with, uh, with two sets, which is kind so of... In the final analysis, what's your advice to Timmy? Well, I'd say Timmy, just start out with the Rashi and see how you go. You know, if you're if you're if you feel like it's not quite uh, doing it for you, you know, you start out with the Rashi and it's just not <laughs> enough. You know, you just, you're gonna get that extra <laughs> that oomph, yeah, yeah. You know, you just, extra antenna power. You know, just a little more clarity just, in your prayers. Exactly. Then yeah, why not? You just want to get that extra bit of like uh, right. And if that doesn't work, I guess you'd put on two Rashis and two Rabinadams at the same time. I don't know about that. And that should uh, amplify the signal up to up to heaven. Apparently, it's to do with it's to do with the way the scrolls are facing. So it's it's the argument between it's a, it's a really weird argument because basically it's Rabinu Tam and Rashi had this argument about which direction the scrolls should be placed. So that right. they're the same, but the scrolls are placed in a different order. But it's to do with whether the commentary is from the person who's wearing them or for another person who's seeing the person wearing mm -hmm. them. So they're in a different order, depending on whether it's POV or the other way. Mm -hmm. And the Benu Tam is just the opposite direction. So it's like... So if you want to save yourself some money, fine. you can open up the uh, tefillin after chakras, switch around the parshias, sew it back up again every single day. See, now this is a good idea. And I think, you know, you could probably make a little machine that would reverse them. But no, because you, you need to do, I don't know how that works. If you need to. The machine will be more than buying an actual brain of thumb. Probably. <laughs> but it's also. Well, let's just say it doesn't. No, yeah. but you, you have to factor in also the cost of your time because if you're, like, if you're a highly paid, say, a highly paid software engineer or something. Uh, yeah. Oh, or right, a yeah. personal trainer who's in demand for, you know, celebrity. Right. From celebrities like you know Rosh Hashivas and stuff, you've right. got a lot of people, you know, looking after your time, and you've got to be able to sort of go, well, you know, if you can take five minutes off your davening every day, that that's quite a lot of time if if you add it all right. up. So that's yeah, true. Little, little kind of little scroll reverser machine that would sit on your head. I think probably the simpler is if you just have two pairs, but yeah, you know, whatever you think is best, Timmy. You're you're, you're the future. It's it's your generation now. <laughs> you, it's right. your problem. You can, you can decide whether that's normal or whether that's going to be extra. Um, so, uh, what else happening in the software engineer world? You're still stuck in. Well, what well, what new mean, inventions are you coming up with, Mister Engineer? So I'm you're the engineer. Write, you're the creator. That's right. I'm trying to. I'm trying to make a. Uh, so I'm working on a, a, a Hebraic uh, Samsung smartwatch, which will use Hebrew numerals and go the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Just because, uh, because, because you want to use, uh, you know, you use proper numerals on your on your watch face. So you can get these new Samsung watches, which are like, um, you know, they've got like a little. You can adjust the, the face, and you can you can customize the, the. Well, a regular person can't customize the face. A regular person will buy a new face for like two dollars or something. But I'm trying to make a nice uh, Hebrew style one, which is using like Hebrew letters. And, and use the other one. That would be great, especially now during Hanukkah, when you know there's an aversion for anything Roman mm. or anything Roman or numerals or or Greek, yeah. right? So we want to yeah. stay away from those kind of numbers. So yeah, now is a special time to get into the market. Are there, are there Hebrew fraternities that use Hebrew letters instead of Greek letters? 
And if not, why not? There should be. When they just speak Hebrew and they just count in Hebrew. So, but you know the way you've got like you've got in uh, in America at least according to American teenage movies. I don't know, but you've always got these like fraternities and they've always got like you know oh it's like some Alpha, come loud or something. Kappa. No, mm-hmm. but they, they have a fraternity house and they have they typically use Greek letters to to denote the different fraternity. So you've got like lambda lambda mu or whatever or alpha alpha kappa, but they should be like yud yud gimel or something. Uh huh. The Jewish. Well, we have Aleph Shear, Bez Shear, and Gimel Shear in Yeshiva. You know, Aleph being the uh, course, elite yeah. and Gimel. Ah, okay. So Gimel Shear is the, the different, the different. Uh, yeah. yeah. Gimel Shear is always a joke because uh, that's the derision that we tell people like, oh, you're just good enough for Gimel Shear. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I tell my clients who are like a Rosh Shiva. Oh, really? he, he wanted to know why we were doing a certain exercise. If last yeah. week we were doing a more intense exercise, I said, mm. Uh, you weren't really, you know, I don't, you weren't really ready for that exercise. You're more like Gimel Shear. And he's like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the way to motivate people, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so we're taking a step back. <laughs> we'll get you back to Olive Shear. Don't you worry. You know, we reassess our, our, our students every couple of months. And then when we feel like they're ready, we bump them up. Don't worry. This is not a knock on your uh-huh. abilities. You're, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of assessing students, have you seen the Shas Yidin Kolel live forum thing? No. It's, so basically, I sent you a link, but um, it was so that so so Shas Yidin is this new Kolel slash yeshiva, and basically they learn the entire Shas in one year. This is their unique selling point. Yeah. So it's like super intense. But you also have a, a lot. They actually stream the faring over the internet, so it's it's like this huge big media event it's like uh-huh. like the it's like ufc of the from world <laughs> it's, it's like the closest thing it's like these like you know these sat guys and they're you know it's all in it's all in yeah i mean I'm, i i have trouble following it but you can kind of hear like the occasional you know some guy will get called a bomb with lucas in front of this entire entire uh, year and it's it's pretty intense but they so what they're out. sitting there arguing they're screaming at each other like what's going on yeah it's like a huge big it's a huge big uh room of 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 um of guys like arguing they're, they're basically this one guy they're they're asking them i presume they're asking them really difficult questions about the time i'm going presumably really difficult questions and uh, they have to answer in front of all their you know in front of everybody uh, and then live on the internet so it's it's a real like motivator to do to to be you know to have a good understanding of the material because you're like i'm gonna get quizzed on this in public um, so yeah, it's interesting. Apparently, it's it's they, they've. Uh, I mean, they've got very good press and good PR. I don't know. It's it's a new thing. So we'll see how they go. But they're opening a place in London, or they were opening a place in London. I don't know what the situation is now, with the uh, the new COVID setup. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. And what they they are they getting tested on the entire shots? Apparently, yeah. They're supposed to know the whole shots in one year, which is in one year. Yeah, in one year. <laughs> I was just like, that's insane. How can you know that? How can you learn that much stuff in a year? And they're like, yeah, they learn on Shabbos. They learn 40, they learn 40 plot a day, supposedly. No. So I think they get people who already know a lot of it already. I think they get only the top. That know, must be, right? Things. Must be people that are already yeah, know it's like, and they're it's just like, really reviewing it. It must be because I, I'm just, you know, I, I look at it and I just go, no way. I mean, I do Daf Yomi. And I'm like, you know, that's Right, that takes time. I yeah, mean, I learn yeah. also on my own, and it just takes time. Yeah, yeah. It just takes yeah, time yeah. to get through it. I mean, I don't know. Maybe if you've got like uh, even, I don't know. I don't know how they. Can, I don't know how they can do it. But apparently, that's this is a this is a we, we should do an investigation, undercover. Maybe it's a fraud. Control. Maybe they're getting money from the government. This is what maybe concerns that's what me. Is. This is what I'm worried about. Maybe it is a fraud. Maybe we should look into it. Maybe we should do an investigative uh, report. Maybe for next episode, we can we can do we can look into it some more. We'll try. We'll we'll take a test and see. See if we can pass. If they if they let us pass, then we know that there's something fishy going on. Yeah. If they let us in, that's definitely a, mm-hmm. it's definitely a, a red flag. I mean, uh, yeah. So yeah. So that that's 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 been kind of my obsession for the past kind of year. What you sit there and you watch them? No, I don't watch them all the time. But it's just been it it pops up on. T- so I was watching Torah anytime like a normal person, and um, they have these ads on on uh, or anytime during in a year impossible and they're like no no we could we, we learn shafts in a year and you know or 
the guys you know, study really, really hard and it's a whole, it's a whole big thing. And it's got a lot of very high profile people, you know, um, endorsing it. So yeah, I don't know, but I think it's definitely like you people who are already, you know, well, because they've got to be they've presumably yeah. in snow. I'm not sure if they're expected to know it off by heart. I guess they are. I think they are at least to be able to go to be able to recall it. Cause that sort of seems to be the way they review. But um, you know, I would have put much, too, too much stock it. in the, uh, in the endorsements, you know, yeah, a lot of right. times the, they just go over to someone and say, they're learning shots in a year. Do you think it's a good idea? Yeah. Yeah. There was another, uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, you're here. <laughs> All these, <laughs> we've got these 200 guys who learn shots in a year. But like, really? Okay. Okay. <laughs> like, Even Rabbi Rabbi K endorsed it. He said, "Okay." Uh, he didn't. He didn't immediately denounce you all. <laughs> but yeah, so it's it's um that's I find that's the thing. A lot of a lot of the time, rabbis will just avoid saying anything, and that can be taken as an endorsement. The fact that they don't say no can be sort yeah. of you know construed as no. But I mean, it's not it's not bad. But yeah, um, you get a lot right. of sort of Rabbi Schomburg used to do that a lot he, when he didn't know a lot of people used to come to him for uh, scummers in their safer. He, he want yeah. they wanted him to say, Rabbi Schomburg, uh, you know, gives his. Uh, you know recommendations but he didn't know yeah. he didn't he didn't have time to read through the whole safer so what he used to do was yeah. he used to write this fine young man used to come came yeah. to me and asked me for approbation for this book he seemed like a very well-mannered person he seemed <laughs> yeah. like a big Talmud Chacham. he seemed like he knew what he was talking about and i'm sure that his book is full of wisdom <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. plausible deniability if it turns out to be bad <laughs> yeah that's great but um yeah, so that so that so that's been kind of I'm I'm just fascinated with this Shasin. And they get like they've got like Lubavitch guys and stuff as well. It's not just, you know I'm sure they have everybody. Ready guys. Yeah, because it's you know such a big such a big thing. I'll send you some I'll send you some links so you can have a look at it and we can talk about it next week. Sure. So um it would probably I so okay, so so last topic I think um we did have uh, I did have one or two people asking me about the the fest the, the other festival. Um, the Goyish festival that comes up. There are one or two people who've married out and wanted to know, should they, um, you know, do the thing with the tree? You, you know, they married out and they want to do the thing with the tree. They want to do the thing with the tree, or they they're well, not the, sure if they should do the thing with the tree. They don't know. They you know they want to have shell and bias, so it's a difficult question. Um, you know, should should they do the thing with the tree? What do you what do you think? Well, do they still believe in God? I think they believe in God. Yeah, they do. I think the tree, and they think married the tree out. has to do with God. I think the tree. No, no, I know. I'm just. I'm working my way up. I'm. I'm not. I'm not there yet. I'm just like. I'm trying to see like where they. What they still believe in. What they still don't believe in. All right, they do believe in God. Okay. They become atheists and married out. And... Nah, I, I just want to know if they believe in atheists and married out. Then what's my advice? And they can it's do whatever they want. Good question. I mean, right? yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. No, well, I mean, they're married out. They still consider themselves. They consider themselves in an interfaith relationship. So. They're still, they still consider themselves Jewish. They're just married to a non-Jew. Which is... Well, I, I honestly don't know the origin for the tree. What is the reason for the tree? I don't think anyone knows the origin for the tree. It seems to be strange. <laughs> well, I don't think, no, I've never met a Christian who understands where the tree comes from. And I've, I've met quite a few and they always go, it's just a thing. Uh -huh. I think it was apparently, it's, it's a thing that was a pagan custom in Norway or in the sort of general Nor, um, the general kind of north um what's the word the north northern scandinavia it was like a, a weird viking or pagan tradition and it was appropriated by by christian missionaries who came in uh -huh. so i'm thinking Christians even if that. even if back then it was a Zara, nowadays mm. it's certainly not that's not why they're doing it they're just doing mm. it because it's a cute tradition mm. yeah and it's so for it's the sake of not causing trouble with the neighbors I so then I don't, I don't see a halachic problem with it, mm. but is she doing it because she wants to get along with her husband, which is also a mitzvah? I think so. I mean, this seems like a reason. I mean, I, I think, it, I don't think it was like a, it does, it's a general question that's open to different people. It's not one specific person. So it's, but I think that that's generally the, 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 the feeling is that it's to do with, you know, showing bias and it's because they, they want to have, you know, they want to, well, that's a great mitzvah. You want, to, you want to go along with the, the local, you don't want to antagonize the neighbors. So yeah, so if, I guess so. I'm gonna guess, push the show and bias button. Yeah, I'm gonna push the show and bias button. Go with that one. Yeah. So I think so. Yeah. So I think we we, we were allowed. It's we a go. It's a go. Right. It's a go. It's a go. We've, we've as long as you have in mind. That, as long as you, you say the shame. 
Yeah, as long as you say, as long as you say l'shem yicha kuchibrichu, l'shem mitzvah shalom bias, you put on your hat and jacket before you do that. You go to the mikvah first, and you have uh-huh. that in mind. You make a bracha, then everything will be okay. And you make a donation to the show on Patreon. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They will know how serious you are. So. Yeah, that's that's important. We need to know. We need to. <laughs> whichever, whichever platform we're streaming on. <laughs> Click the link, it's whatever direction it is. And it's the, not, it's not that we need your money. It's not about the money. It's not, we just want to see you. if you're serious. It's for yeah, you. It's, it's about it's, you. We want you to you. put commitment to it. Yeah. We don't need your money. It's but if you give the money, it benefits you. You know. That's my sock. Okay, so we have a we have a we're both in, in agreement over here. Even though you're Hasidic and I'm Litvish, yeah, yeah, we came to yeah. the same conclusion. Well, yeah. then it must be this is a sign from the heavens. Yeah. I mean, if Hasidish and Lutvix agree, it, there's no other opinion. Yes, coming. There's no other opinion. <laughs> That's a, that is that represents the full diversity of the entire Jewish yeah. spectrum of opinion. It's right so here. Yep. <laughs> That's it. That's it. You've got the, the <laughs> both. We have both kinds of opinion. Yeah. Hasidish and Lutvix. Yeah. Great question. Is, the, the podcast is so much more balanced now. Um, so, yeah. Um, we're pretty much running short of time. Is there anything else we want to go over? How, how are we on time? Are we in the half hour? Definitely. We have final remarks. We're ready for the final remarks. The final remarks. So um, so actually, this is going to be the last uh, podcast, I think. No, before the free thing. We might have one more before the end of the secular year, but this is nearly the end of 2020. I don't know if we're going to be... Are we going to do one next week? It's the 28th. No, it's the 29th. So, yeah, it's, yeah. Well, I'm not going to be busy with the tree. That's true, nor am I. I, I. I had quite enough work for Hanukkah. Elon Gold, Gold does a really funny routine about the tree, actually, about the uh, checking the tree. and. Uh, Maybe you'll uh, you'll put in a segment of his into the, uh, I don't into know the closing we, remarks. We might have to just... Or you might get bumped from Facebook again. We might get bumped from Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so we can put it, we might be able to put a, I think we can put a link in the comments or a link in the, a link in the podcast notes. That's, I think that's... Right next to the Patreon donate button. Yeah. Or, yeah, I hope I don't get those two mixed up. But, um, yeah, so it should be fine. But, uh, yeah, Elon Gold does a very funny routine about the three, you know, the, the rabbinical. Basically, it was the premise is if it was uh, in the Talmud, what to do with the tree, like the, what the, that would, would be. Oh, the halachic standards. The hal- yeah, and it would be a whole, all these different arguments about the correct way to put the tree and the different options and all these things. Um, cute. It would be, would be quite cute. Um, what was the other thing we were talking about? Yeah, so like the end of the secular, this 2020 is nearly over now. So that's, um, that's going to be, not that it makes it here. What are your resolutions, huh? I don't know. My resolutions, I don't know. Well, is that I mean, a thing? I already... Did I make that up or is that a thing? I got that from Calvin and Hobbes that he has these resolutions. Yeah, it's a thing. So technically for me, the, the year is already over because... Um, it ended uh, two, three, it was, well, it was Hasidic Rosh Hashanah over two weeks ago. So technically, I've, it's already the new year by me, but um, by the secular calendar, it's it's new year in, in two weeks, in a week and a bit. So whenever it is. Oh, oh, my God. oh no, we're back. So yeah, um, yeah, I guess. I mean, there's a resolutions thing, which I suppose basically, I think for you, that'll be a, a, big, uh, a big thing because usually people decide they're too fat and they need to lose weight. So, oh, it's a yes. good marketing. Maybe it's a big business. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. You do, did you, do you advertise your, 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 um, your fitness business or is it invitation only? I used to write articles for a local newspaper. Oh. That was one of my ways of uh, advertising. But my major business comes from my wife owns a storefront gym. So oh, nice. a, a ladies gym. So all the husbands are like, well, what's going on over there? What are you guys doing? What are you, what's going on? They're like, well, can't come in, but there's this guy. I know a guy. Yeah. So I got most of my business from the husbands of the women that came to the. Uh, Excellent. Yeah. And then it became word of mouth. So. Yeah, great. We need to work out. A, I've I've been doing passive stretches recently. I'm trying to trying to get. You doing the Gamora stretches? Oh yeah, we sh- you know what we should do for the next uh, podcast. We should do a you know a very short. Uh, Sample, uh, sample a short training. sample workout, yeah. Oh, that'd do. be great. That'd be great. I have um. So we've got, we've got the art scroll. Uh, we got two. We got two art scroll. Dafyomi size. And I need got... Baba Basra. We need Baba Basra. Yeah, 
I've got I've got Brockus in full size. Brockus is also good. Yeah, Brockus is, is good. Okay. Yeah. And, that'll and be that, good. That'll be part of the strength uh, portion, and then mm-hmm. depending on how fast you could turn the pages, will be the cardio part. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. All right. Do some pre stretches about standing by the stender, sitting down in your chair. Yep. You know, shuckling a little bit, yep. pulling yep. your that beard a little bit. That'll I'm be really pumped. I'm really pumped about this already. This is going to be good. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be great. Cool. All Sweet. right. Now we have something to look forward to next time. It's going to be great. Super. Okay. Well, uh, you cool. This has been, uh, as always, it's very illuminating for I think for me and for all of our viewers. Sure. And, so much uh, fun. Yeah. Good fun. See you next week. Same time, same place. Before Skia. Yep. See you later, buddy. Okay, take care.